But at what point in the career did you get, uh, I don't know if passionate is the word, or like, like invested in this kind of stuff with tennis, like with oh, with like the whew. yeah, with like the, the tour system in general, and the structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think stuff. that was when I hit my career high ranking. That's when I hit like actually right before that, I hit like the darkest depression of my career. Um, lost like eight matches, so I won a challenge at the beginning of the year in Numia lost eight matches in a row kind of mid-year and like eight matches in a row for people that don't know that's like a long time yeah. you know that's like a so few at months least, yeah. at least two months like two, yeah <laughs> at and, least and, and i didn't play that many tournaments so it's like three and a half months for me. <laughs> yeah so i'm like texting my girlfriend like i can't play tennis you know like literally can't strike a ball um and then um so really depressed and i, I kind of had a breakthrough right after that where i needed two matches at the tallahassee challenger to qualify for the French Open, just to get into qualies. And I ended, and it was a really tough draw. I played Cope for first round, Oof. down set points in the first set, beat him, and then it was Kudla second round. It's rough. And then I ended up actually winning the tournament. I got a wild card to Maine, and then it kind of kickstarted again. Um, and then after that summer, I, I had a good summer, broken shoe, fucking, if I hear that story one more time. <laughs> <laughs> It's great. I only played one match in my career. Flip flops. Yeah. <laughs> they don't even tag me in the fucking posts on tennis TV. That's crazy. It's, it's an Isner clip. Yeah. It's yeah. The guy, clip. the guy who played Isner, who is that? <laughs> Why every time on tennis TV they only post the person who wins the point, never the person who loses yeah. the point? We ridiculous. We didn't even point. play a point. It broke my shoe. Like, Isner's what? opponent broke yeah. his shoe. <laughs> Some guy over there broke uh, his shoe. So I got to my career high after that. I was playing good ball. And then played Tibron, Tibron Challenger, great challenger, probably great one of the best. Yeah. And I think I either it was quarters or semis. I want to say quarters that I lost in, and I was just like, "The fuck am I doing?" Like, <laughs> like I put in so many matches. I have to I have to work hard every match. I mean, you know, I don't have the size. I'm not acing guys off the court here, so I'm like grinding my ass off. And I just like after a really good summer. I was just like, I just lost in the quarters of a challenger and like nothing. I need another two challengers to get to top 100 titles on top of what I already have to get to top 100. Like, I have so much more to go. This sucks. Like this, I have to put in so much effort. And that's where like, I, I've spoke, you know, like Bradley Klon did it where he like, you sneak to Korea for like five weeks and see what you can do and try to like make that last jump. And I wish, I wish I would have pushed past it, but I was in no state of mind. And that was kind of where I started opening that book and peeling back the curtain and being like what's actually going on in the sport like does anybody make money is anybody happy playing this sport mm -hmm. and um and that was it that from there on um so that was the end of 2018 and then 2019 i started behind the racket it was like er it was the thought was after australia in january and then i got back home and then, yeah, and then it led to behind the racket and everything else. So it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but that was when I started really understanding, like, holy shit, this sport is... So basically, it was like, problems. you were feeling that you were doing really well, and, and you I didn't were, have you anything to show. No, no reward. Yeah. I had no yeah. reward, because, A, you're not really winning tournaments every week, so you don't get trophies. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I made good money that summer, but, like, I, didn't, I was spending a lot of money. I was spending a lot... That was one of the first time I had coaches with me that I was spending personally on uh, physios as well, back home, some on the road. And I'm looking and I'm like, I mean, I should have like yeah. 750 grand in my bank. And like, I have like 65 grand. It's and it was just like, and I know that's going to go next year. And if I don't do as well, like that's gone. Like that, that was tough. I think Justin asked a question in the COVID episode uh, last year. It's like, people already think about like the better you get, it's also more expensive things are because then now you're going to say, okay, let me reinvest some of the money I'm making back into my career. Now I can afford a coach on the road. So then the coach on the road is going to come and take up some of the money that you I wasn't make. even it's there, not, bro. No, but you, you helped us write the, oh, the good. format. Brother. But I would say, and I would say to that, like that ranking point that I was at, like that 110 to 130 range is like the worst range for what you're talking about because you're not guaranteed main draw slams yet, yeah, so you don't yeah, have that guarantee, exactly. but you're, you're a main draw slam player in your head, mm -hmm. but, you have, but you don't have that money yet. Yeah. So like, I'm putting that money in as if like, I gotta get there, but I don't have it. And it's not, it's not, it's not certain guaranteed. that, yeah. Exactly. It's a gamble. It's a, it's a full gamble. So at that point, I actually 
didn't gamble enough. But yeah, you, you have to gamble though, right? Because then you'd be like, oh, what if I? You have to do everything you can to try and push past. Yeah, if you don't play, if you don't yeah. play, you can't win. Yeah. I wish somebody came up to me and said like, you know, you could get back here eventually, which is you know why I'm here playing again. But like, this could be your one chance. Yeah. Like, go all in. Like, fuck it. Like, go for it. And if you come out with you know, 50 grand in debt, like, so be it. But this was your chance. And I wish I had a little bit more of that push from somebody that just told me, like, this is it. So it's a, it's funny because it's two things. Like, one, maybe you felt, on one hand, you're more conservative. So that's in your control, like, what you decide to do. Sure. But on the other other side, you are unhappy with the system to know that you're playing a high level, uh, high level of tennis. You are just outside the top 100, but you felt like you had nothing to show for it. And it was two challenger wins to get to where you want to be like i was just tired yeah i was just tired I and mean, that's what it came down it was a long year i put a lot of matches in and you know that feeling where it's like fuck <laughs> like, I, I gotta i gotta do everything again yeah. you know and it's i have like to make sure it, it was a lot it was a lot at that point and i was like i just don't have it in me my body was it wasn't even a mess i was just tired of waking up and you know doing the same shit and like trying to get my body to feel okay and then go out and you know serve two aces every four matches <laughs> just like shit like 30 ball rallies yeah i was like god like on a good day i remember playing coconacas in atlanta i came out with like six aces and i was like like going through the fans like, <laughs> like we did it baby living in slow motion like this it. is it i was like holy shit is this what these guys feel like <laughs> Like I basically, I didn't even try this match. I didn't even have to try. I got six aces. But yeah, it was. I was exhausted. Six free points, man. Six free points. Yeah. So again, I wish somebody came up to me and been like, "This is it. Go for it. You're you're never gonna have this chance again." But it you is think what you could have at that point though, or would it have been like a mental, like emotional thing that could have put you in the in the ground? Yeah, but I, and this is somebody that's been a part of mental health, like. I still would have liked to try yeah. even going back and seeing because I wasn't quite as dark as a space as it was in those, you know, eight losses in a row, but I was exhausted, tired, down, but like, I think I could have put it in. You think that's part of why you're back now? Because you feel like if you get to that point again and then you make a different decision different. this time, maybe the result will be different. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's a lot of reasons that I'm looking at this sport differently. Like I coach juniors. I feel different. I'm seeing the game differently. But yes, I mean, I think, you know, if I roll my ankle too good, you know, if I just don't play good tennis, like too good. But I want to give myself a chance to be back in that position and make different decisions and be back in, di you know, even... Just knowing how I've done things in the past, like small things, like when I won a tournament, I've never won a match after winning a tournament where like tennis is a very big momentum based sport. Like that's how guys like get into the top hundred is they either sneak eight matches in a row at a slam or they get three challenges in a row or something. And I, because it was so physical, I was never able to, but like, shit, like maybe I should have got nine massages that day. Yeah. You know, just put like 10 grand out and just like so have what, somebody work on my body for 10 hours. So the, yeah. would the change then be you pay more attention to your body during that week or then do you take one week off and then go the, the week after? Both? Something? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, it, it really depends. It depends ranking based. You know, uh, I, I actually just spoke to Jamie Loeb about this. She just, she's been struggling, but she just won like a 40K. We don't have 40s, but it was basically our 50. And I told her, I was like, go, like go play anything right now yeah. like just use that momentum she's like body's tired i was like yeah that's fine like you're gonna be tired but like i think you just have to use the momentum sneak the first tough match like the first match of the tournament is always difficult and then you just play because I, I just look at these guys um that have made it and they just can put like a win final two quarters and they're like they're there and just you just have to push through and i think i almost think there's no other way to do it in tennis at this point yeah that's it's hard. I feel like when you win a tournament, you're the least prepared guy for the next tournament. Like Jordan Thompson wins and Los Cabos shows up to Acapulco probably late night, comes in, has to play Kova, who's also a very good player. Like yeah. you're the least prepared guy to actually make that run. So you Same have to be... Jari and... Uh, who do you play in the final? Uh, Jari... Diaz Acosta. Yeah, Diaz Acosta. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. So it's like... Yeah, you, you gotta be tough. Yeah, you have to hope, and this is and this is where like it didn't work for me as much. Um, <laughs> like some people think I'm overly arrogant. Like I don't have that all the time when I'm playing. But like you see those guys at title, 
they come out mm. to the next tournament like they're the fucking like they're yeah. fed yeah. and like you have to do that to get through like the first two matches and then once you're back in the quarters again then you you can find your way through like i just titled last week like they manage that but it's just this like ultra confidence that like <laughs> getting through those, those gutsy out. matches those awkward when it gets to a yeah. point and, or a break point they're like fuck i did that 12 times last week like i'm fine let me just go slider wide do my thing call yeah. it out but <laughs> 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 you know but like yeah that's it's it's not e it's just not easy. Yeah. It's just not easy. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the clip. The full episode will be in the link down below. Go check it out and check out all of our other episodes in the past. Hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming videos.